Hey, we are live. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm using my my little lavalier mic. Sometimes it's not very good. Sometimes it is pretty good, but sometimes it's not very good. And of course, as usual, I'm late and this is very impromptu. So my apologies if you guys were waiting. Okay, let's see if, if this worked, if I see anybody. Oh, we have one person. Okay, cool, so that means I did something right. Alrighty, let's see here. This light looks good. Got a new light, so I'm using that. Uh, what's up, K Barry? How's it going, man? Can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me, if I sound muffled, if I should move that. What's up, Pete? How's it going, man? Long work it, yeah. Hey Isaac, yeah, look at my eyes. I got, I've been staring at a screen typing all day. I'm very, very, very tired. Well, good thing I sound all right. Let's see here. Dude, I am doing very, very good. I haven't had a cigar in a while. This is a Padilla Miami. I think this is a Toro. Let me know if you guys have had one in the comments below. Um, let's see here. I just had a question. Hmm. Favorite pipe tobacco? My favorite is Fusilier's Ration. It's like an English aromatic mix. Uh, well, uh -huh. Dude, get your glass and your cigar and come on and join me. I wish I could do online, I mean, uh, hangouts. I don't know how to do hangouts. I gotta figure that out. Cause that would be ideal if I could really, you know, if I could actually hang out with you guys and, you know, kind of like podcast almost, that'd be, that'd be legit. I've had this cigar for like four or five years. Pretty good. Uh-huh. Hang on, friend. Grayson. How's it going, Grayson? Let's see here. I think this is... It's pretty decent lighting. Um, it looks kind of, it looks kind of green. Let me see if I can turn this down. Move this back. Maybe, maybe that's better. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe we'll find out here. You can never really tell because the camera is making adjustments. While I'm making adjustments, you know, so I think this is a little better. It looks a little less green, but yeah, so we're smoking a Padilla. This is my uh, Miami Padilla. This is the Toro. Had it for a few years. We got all kinds of alcohol right here. So I'd, I want to show you guys some of my favorite and least favorite Costco alcohols. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. We're going to talk about knives. We're going to talk about my channel, we're gonna talk about uh, all kinds of stuff. Your questions? Right now my wife is out of town on a choir uh, like field trip, so it's just me hanging out, doing my thing, doing my thing. Let's see here. My favorite blend is Peter Stokeby English Luxury. That's a very good one. It's like a little round circular disc in the middle is a Cavendish, very good one. I've got some of that stuff that's called like four or five years old. Uh, yeah, it's super cheap, you're right. I can't believe it's actually that cheap. It's like a Scudo, I think. Except a Scudo doesn't have black Cavendish in the middle. Uh, let's see here. Hey, what's up Iceman? You're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. We try to do live stuff maybe like once a week talk about my week, talk about your questions, hang out, have a cigar. Uh, let's see here. And we're gonna talk about Costco uh, alcohol, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because to, believe it or not, there's actually a few bad ones. Most of them are good from Costco. What's up, RG, how's it going? So, let's see here. Let me show you guys. Uh, let's see here. If you guys have, okay, it, I guess if you don't have a Costco membership, you probably don't give a crap. But if you do, maybe, just maybe, you'll, you, you might like this. Okay, you ready? 
My all-time favorite from Costco is this right here. Very simple, bullet bourbon. Comes in a huge, like, what is that? 1.75 liter, very, very affordable. It's like 30 bucks or something like that, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Super awesome. I can, I normally have this on the rocks, which is what I'm gonna do tonight. I don't really mind watering it down because it's heavy on the rye. It's super cheap, just like that. Okay, so this is like, for me, this is a staple. I always have it. And if you go to Costco, it's the cheapest place I've ever found it. And this is pretty good. Wait a minute here. What's up, Mario? RG says Costco doesn't even sell liquor. What the heck? What the heck, man? If they don't sell liquor, what's the point? That's my, <laughs> that's my question. That's my question. So that's a staple. I always get that bullet for the price. Um, let's see here. Now the worst, this is the absolute, this is so far the worst I've ever bought. It's not, I mean, it's not a big regret, but this is the spiced rum. To me, this is huge. It's very cheap. It was like 20 bucks. I was like, worst case scenario, it's just a good mixer with Coke. And that's exactly what it is. It's, it's actually worse. In my opinion, this is worse than, um, uh, what's it called? Captain Morgan's or, or Bacardi. I think this is worse. It tastes more lacquery, but it's still good in, in Coke. So, but for 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. It's just, this is not, this is, I don't know. Normally they're better than like the, the shelf, the, the bottom shelf stuff, but that wasn't, that was actually, I think that's a little worse than Captain Morgan's. Uh, let's see here. And this is, okay, so this was a huge surprise. I bought this last month. Check this out. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I can't believe I bought this thing because, I mean, here's some forced perspective. It's huge. Um, this is a bottle of tequila. It's Respado tequila, so it's like uh, aged a little bit. And um, let's see here, it's called Tequila Correjo, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this was very affordable. This was like 35 bucks, huge 1.7 out, 1.75 liter. This is very good stuff. I normally have this with a little bit of a lime wedge and it's actually good enough to sip, just barely. So what I'll do normally with this, it, I think it's better, way better than Ornitos. Might put a little bit in a little whiskey glass. A Glen, this is called a Glen Karen if you don't know. And if you really want, you could add a little bit of water, but it's actually pretty good with just a little bit of lime. So this might be something where I squeeze a lime in and enjoy that. Man, I'm, I'm pouring too many things right now. <laughs> but if you don't know, this was a very good Costco buy. Um, and it, I think it's a really cool bottle. So actually this is on my counter. It's just a, it's a decorative bottle. And it's very, very good for the price. It's not, it's not going to win any awards. It's probably not designed to sip, but you can, you can sip with it. You can, um, let me see here. My microphone's probably, you probably can't hear me, but you can, you can sip it and it works. I mean, it's not, it's not ideal, but, um, you can see the color is slight color. That's like that pink color. It's just a very good, uh, you know, medium, you know, middle of the road tequila. It's very, very good for the price. And uh, with a little bit of lime, that's the trick. Okay, we got some questions here. I've been missing a lot. Aunt Jenny, how's it going? That's my Aunt Jenny. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, you got a lot of questions. Do, 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 do. Okay. Cancel. Oh, I can add a moderator? What? No way. What's that? What's that? Okay. I thought I could add a moderator. Do, 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 do. Where did I miss? Like, I'm using my phone right now because I didn't want to bring my whole laptop outside. Let's see here. Uh, so it's kind of hard to scroll with your little finger. Uh, what state do I live in Arizona right now? It's beautiful outside. Um, I'm glad I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Michigan So I'm really glad to be out of the polar vortex. We had last week there 
Um, I think it's going to be about 40 degrees tonight, which is kind of cold for here. That's pretty cold. What? I'm just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, uh, what's up from the UK? How's it going? Uh, let's see here. So I think right now it's about 65 degrees, maybe 60 degrees. What's a good high-end rum? Now, a good high-end rum, rum is really weird to me because, um, well, I haven't explored it very much. But um, one of my buddies told me a few rums I have to try. Um, I can't remember their names. Oh, the types of rum. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think at the back of my head. There's a few that are really, really good from Cuba. Oh, I forget. You probably shouldn't ask me about rum. Um, I know I know the bottles when I see it. Like, the it starts with a Z. Um, I know the bottles when I see it, but I... Uh, I don't really drink rum that much. I watch videos when... Yeah, I wouldn't buy Jose Cuervo. We actually, okay, so here's a funny story about Jose Cuervo. We have a good history, or a bad history with it. Jose Cuervo uh, is the most cheap basic wine, uh, basic tequila you can get. And it, on our honeymoon, we, we were opening up our, our thank you letters from people from the wedding and so every time we'd open a letter, we'd take a shot. And, you know, of course, five or six shots in, well, you get sick. And so my wife got really sick, hung over. It was the only time I think she was hung over, one of the few times. And so now we kind of hate Jose Cuervo. It's kind of the joke. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, it's full of colorings and additives. And um, this stuff right here is much better. Okay. Let's see here, it's gonna be 36 in Tucson, very cold. Um, yeah, it's not really cold um, compared to the rest of the world, but, you know, compared to, for what we normally get, 36 or 40 is cold. Okay. Yeah, that Mexican rum my buddy was telling me about, it's very good, he said for 20 bucks. I'm gonna have to go get some. Let's see here, Havana Club is very good, I've heard. Appleton. Appleton is a Jamaican rum. It's very, well, I'm sure they have more than one level of Appleton, but the Appleton I've tried wasn't very good. It was kind of, I mean, it was a good mixer. It's, it's just a nice, sweet Jamaican rum. I'm trying to adjust my light here. Uh, let's see here. Havana Club, I don't know, 40 bucks. I guess it depends which one you get. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I've never had Arcola whiskey. Sounds good, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Tim. Okay, here's a good question. When are Tim, When is uh, Tim and I going to hang out again? Let me get this light closer because it's getting darker. Uh, okay, so Tim and I are going to hang out. Um, I might see him tomorrow. He invited me over to the shop. He called me the other day and he was like, dude, you gotta come. You gotta hang out. You gotta see the new place. So maybe tomorrow I'll show up. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, so I, here's, here's the part with Tim. It's like, I want to do cool and I want to do cool video stuff with him, but he's also just a friend. So sometimes I just want to go see him. So I might just go hang out with him just for fun tomorrow since my wife's out of town. Um, but I haven't seen the new shop. I can't believe it. Do you guys know, every time I see him, oh, can you hear me? Every time I see Tim, it's kind of crazy because my, my Facebook blows up, my YouTube blows up, you guys are obsessed with Tim, and I'm like, dang, like, he has a huge following, and if even if I just mention his name, people talk about him. Uh, let's see here. Don Julio is the best tequila, I have to try that one. About five years or better when it comes to rum. Uh, okay, all right, all right. My favorite whiskey, um, well, it depends, because I like scotch, I like bourbon, I like rye. They're very, very different. When you get into the whiskey world, it seems like a lot of people kind of stick to one type of whiskey. Like, I know a lot of people who only drink scotch. I know a lot of people who really like uh, Tennessee whiskey. I know a lot of people who only drink bourbon. So, um, it, it's kind of weird. It's um, 
I don't know how to describe it, but um, they're all whiskeys. So I really like, as far as bourbon goes, I really am a fan um, of, uh, whew, I can think of a lot. There, there's different purposes for them too. I just had an Elijah Craig 18 year, which was amazing. It was like, it was like maple syrup. Um, I had, uh, I think it was a single barrel. I'm trying to think, I had a single barrel. Um, what's the one for the Kentucky Derby? It's uh, like orange looking bottle. It was a single barrel of that. It was very affordable. It was very good, very, very soft bourbon. Some bourbons are really soft. Some are like really sweet and weeded. Some are more rye heavy. Um, so there's really a, even within bourbons, there's a huge variety and it's kind of hard to compare them. I've never tried monkey shoulder. I don't think I've tried it. Maybe I've tried it in a sampler and I didn't know it. But I don't think I've tried monkey shoulder. Uh, Bullet is always good for me. A favorite cigar with the whiskey. Um, okay, so with whiskey, if it's a sweeter whiskey, um, I tend to like broadleaf cigars. They have a lot more sweetness and bold raisin flavors. And I think those go pretty well with most sweeter whiskeys. Um, I like, I love a nice strong broadleaf cigar. Like a Nica Rustica for me is incredible. Uh, let's see here. Patron, like Don Julio too, Patron and Espiliar are good too. Do, do. Okay, do you have problems with any local BMAs being there tasteless? Or like stale tobacco. I find that most B&Ms here are very, very good. Um, we have a good tobacco or cigar, you know. At Arizona, we have a good cigar culture. Um, just to come to think of it, we got TNT. Now we got Zeal Cigars. Now we got, uh, you know, Cigars Daily. Now we got, uh, you know, there's, I, there's like tons of shops in Scottsdale and everything. We have good tobacco laws. We have a lot of Native American land here, and so the taxation is different on those lands. So um, I don't have any problems getting good stuff, you know. Um, I was at a shop called Church Hills in Scottsdale. They had a ton of really cool tatawahes that I've never seen anywhere else. Um, and, and very affordable stuff too, even though it was a really nice ritzy area, it was very, very affordable. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to go fast because all these things are coming up. Uh, let's see here. All right, see you, see you, Grayson. Oh yeah, Ron Zakapa, 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 Zakapa. That's the one I really want to try. Padron would be really great with that. Oh man. Uh, would you ever do a whiskey barrel by a group of friends? I don't have friends that would buy a. I don't think I would have friends that would buy a barrel. You know, I might buy a barrel, but my wife would be pissed at me. How much is a barrel? Like a thousand to five thousand dollars? Depends on the barrel. Um, but, where, but where would I put it? In my garage? I mean, it's too hot here to store a barrel. I don't know. Sometimes you can buy a barrel and the company will keep it for you. And either they can age it for you or you can do whatever you want with it in their warehouse. I've seen people do that with wine as well. It's cheaper and it's a long-term investment, you know, kind of like a family heirloom kind of a thing. I don't know if I would do that though. I'm not, I don't know. I got too many hobbies. I spend too much money on, uh, I spend too much money on camera gear. And uh, yeah, I just got a lot going on. I don't know if I would do that. Mm, let's see here, did I miss anything? Oh, so the stick tonight is the Padilla. 19, oh, let me see if I, not 19. Can you see that? You can probably see that. Padilla Miami Toro. I've had this for a few years. Actually, this looks pretty good over here, doesn't it? I think it, I don't, I don't know. Let's see here, I'm gonna move this. It looks kind of green. Okay. Okay, turn this up. Oh, now I got too many shadows. Too many shadows. I don't know. There's no really right way to do this right now. Um, let's see here. I've got a few other people. 
Let's see here. Mm hmm. What are your thoughts on Padilla? Um, my thoughts, very good cigars. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, this was kind of like what got me into premium cigars. And so I've had a lot of their like lower end stuff. And I love it. I love Padilla. I think they've kind of, they've kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Padilla's kind of, from what I, from my opinion, I've seen them kind of go down a little bit more. I don't know if it's because they have more uh, lines, more cigars. So maybe there's just less quality stuff and the upper end stuff stays up there. But overall, I've noticed it seems like I haven't, been, I haven't been wowed. Like I used to be wowed by Padilla. And it hasn't, I haven't been wowed in a while. I need to be wowed again. Let's see here. Oh, that's so bright. Man, this thing's annoying. This thing's quite annoying. Okay. Okay. I think that's better. Man, I don't know. Okay. Um, five to six bottles. That'd be great. If every, if every one of your friend bought five to six bottles, but then what if you buy crap? What if it's crap? Like, do you, do you get a taste? Do you get a taste the whiskey before you buy it? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Plenty of lighting. Okay, cool. Cause I was thinking about going way far back. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This looks kind of cool. That light. Um, what else? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, I want to show you guys. I think I've already done a video on it, but I got a bunch of Benchmates for Christmas. And so this is the Benchmade Bug Out. This is the Benchmade uh, Osborne. I, this is like my dream knife right here. I can't believe I got it. And they're super buttery smooth. This is my Chinese ripoff. And you know what? This is a Gonzo. I'm really surprised that this, you know, now, now that I can kind of compare it, because I had a grip tilling before, this is really smooth for 20 bucks. You know, I don't, I don't want to say it, but they ripped off Benchmade and they did a great job. So I'm kind of a knife nut and I could definitely recommend this knife, even though it's, you know, this is, this is a fake, but it's a really good fake and I hate to love it, but I love it. It's my beater knife. It looks like an Ont Ontario rat two or one and man this is just a great knife i'm like freaking a if this if this had better steel then man we would have some serious competition with these really expensive bench made knives but um i think i'm in knife heaven now Let's see like this this bug out's nice people um people were talking about the bug out being super skinny if you're into knives this is the perfect edc super light super skinny flow through design um, but when you have a super light knife, uh, light knife, you know, there's, there's, there's no metal in here. So, um, if you really want to, you can actually kind of bend it a little bit. Can you see that? Just a tiny bit. There's a tiny bit of blade plate. And if I really wanted to, I could squeeze. Can you see that? I can squeeze the liners just a little bit. And so I think it's like Zytel plastic or something. Um, I don't mind that. It's not like I'm beating on this knife all day. It's super light. I don't even know it's in my pocket. But um, I was thinking about that. Like, okay, you're always sacri- Like in the knife world, you know, you have a super thin blade, so it's a great slicer. But it's not going to be able to take abuse, like hits and wax and heavy things. Um, it's super light, but now, now it can bend a little bit. So I was thinking about that. Like, this is aluminum. There's no blade play at all. And it opens smoothly. It's heavier beautiful titanium backspacer. So I'm just kind of freaking out about that. Um, but I'm telling you, if you guys don't know anything about Gonzo, definitely pick up a Gonzo. Even if it's 20 bucks, you throw it in your car, you forget you have it. It's a great knife. Man, I just can't believe they can rip off a company. What's up, poop stain killer? How's it going, man? If you guys are just joining, we got a Padilla Miami we're smoking. We're drinking some Bullet Bourbon. And um, if you don't know, I forgot to add this. I forgot my cigar 
won't stay still. This is my secret weapon, Angostura Orange Bitters. I've do, I do this a lot, so it's nothing new. But you do a few drops in your whiskey. For me, that's just a killer combo. Um, and I think this is like 15 bucks, 12 bucks. Makes your whiskey way better. And again, do not buy the spiced rum. This thing sucks. This is not gonna do you any good. But definitely buy this tequila. Man, this is so good. Corralejo? Cor Corralejo? I can never, can't roll my R's. Cor Corralejo. Hello. Uh, let's see here. Mrs. Patton. Mrs. Patton is way up north. Flagstaff, Arizona. She's doing a choir concert there. So it's just me hanging out. It's just, I'm all alone, man. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay, honestly, I had to click just to find out why anyone would ask you anything. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, Elijah Craig, 18 year bourbon, $6,000. What? Whiskey Drinker's Prize, the richest of my bourbon. What? But the flavor comes at a price. Each barrel is about 150, 200 baht. Whoa, so that's six. Wow. It was good bourbon though. It was uh, it was about thirty dollars for one ounce. Just one little ounce is about thirty bucks, or maybe it was thirteen. I forget. Maybe we got double pours. It was expensive. I know that. It was very good and very expensive. Uh, I love to be in Arizona. Too cold in New York. Man, it is perfect here. It is. It's a beautiful day. Well, it's gonna be freezing tonight, but you know you really you can't complain um, too much. So. You know, I got just a, a thin jacket on. Thin jacket, cigar, whiskey. I'm a happy guy. This is, um, if you're not from Arizona, this is like the perfect time of year because it's it's never too hot in the winter. It's, you know, we have a lot of sun in the winter time. Um, you have a nice cold night so you can sleep really well. Um, you don't really need a heater. I mean, you could turn your heater on if you want. Actually, last night was the first time I turned the heater on in over eight months. Um, so you don't have to pay for air conditioning. That's really great. Um, what else? Right around March is when it starts to get really, really hot. Uh, let's see here. When are you going to do the choir class with Miss Pat? Um, I can't do choir, man. Well, I can sing, but I can't go back to high school. She's a high school person, teacher. Well, she sings in the choir, too. But um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I, I'm too busy with YouTube. I got too many mattresses. I got to review. Mm. Do a GoFundMe. What? Oh, to visit c to come here. Yeah. All right. Just hop on a plane, man. Hop on a plane. Come on over. <laughs> Alrighty, um, what else do I gotta talk about? Got knives, got Costco. Man, I'm excited. Okay, so if you watch my channel, I, I review like mattresses and cigars and I got a new mattress. It's like a sleep number mattress. I mean, you might not care about this, but I think it's cool. It comes up in a box, tightly rolled, and you push a button bloop, on the remote and it blows up like an air mattress, but it's super high quality. It's got like foam and stuff. It sleeps just like an, uh, a sleep number. And I'm like, man, how? Mattresses are getting so good. Like, imagine 10 years from now, they're gonna be super cheap and everyone is gonna have like a sleep number. Like, you're, you're gonna see that review soon. It's, it's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. I'm impressed. It's called the Idle Air. So, and I got a lot of coffee stuff I gotta review. People are sending stuff in. Uh, Grand Habano is sending a big care package of stuff, so I can't wait to give my opinion on that. Um, I love Grand Habano. What, what are your thoughts on Grand Habano cigars? They, I've had their Corojo number no. five. I was, I, I like that a lot. It was pretty good. Have you guys had any other uh, Grand Habano? Let me know. Let me know. Let me see here. 
Um, what else? Have you, if you haven't tried the Crazy Alice cigar, you should. I definitely should. Alice, went, she went crazy trying the, uh, people say she like tried shrooms, right? And then um, she fell down the rabbit hole. I guess it was like a psychedelic trip, right? What's the cigar? Maybe you guys can help me out. It's got like a little razor, like a, a, a straight razor on it. And you know, it's like hanging like a V. I think it's a purple label maybe. What cigar is that? I don't know what that is. There's three sisters, Crazy Alice, Fat Bottom Belly, and one other. Huh. See, I'm kind of, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm kind of out of the cigar world a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of out of the cigar world because I don't really buy cigars. Um, if I do, I'll buy like two or three at the shop, but like I used to buy a ton. I got a huge package from Cigar Bid, you know, but that was like once a year. I'm trying to smoke the ones I have, that's my problem. Caldwell is the La, Bar La Barba, La Barbara, Barbara, the barber. That's that, so that's the Caldwell, I really wanna try the Caldwell. My favorite cigar cutter, lighter. Oh, okay, um, well I guess my favorite cutter, I mean this is kinda of everyone's favorite, it's nothing fancy. Just a Zycar, standard Zycar lighter. Super sharp, I've had this for like 10 years. It's, you know, it's just, it's a killer. It's got a lifetime warranty. It's just, it's a great cutter. They even give you like a little pouch that goes with it. Um, this is like 30 bucks maybe. So even if you do lose it, you're not gonna die, but it's gonna last you forever. And then um, if you're not aware, I think I have a link below for all this stuff. Uh, this is a Vector lighter. I'm a big fan of Vector. They're, they make very cheap, super cheap lighters and uh, this is five torches in one and it's got like a little mirror in the bottom if you really want to do that you can look at your cigar in the mirror but um very reliable it's like a tank and um this is pretty cheap too this is like 40 bucks maybe um so check that link below if you do want to get one because you know when it comes to like lighters like i've i've discovered that you spend 20 bucks it's okay. You spend 40 bucks, you get something really nice. It's going to last you forever. So that's kind of like my my range, like 50 to 40 to 50 bucks, you get a nice lighter that you're going to love for a very long time. And spend 30 bucks or so, get a Zycar, you know, like this right here. This is my go-to, you know, right there. That's all you need. That's kind of what I tell people um Let's see here. They're from Deadwood Tobacco. I think Drew State commissioned them. Oh, okay. All right. People tell me a lot, like, what's your favorite cigar? What's your... I say it every single time. I'm, I'm not going to change it. Probably the Caffey 19... 19 is it 1903? Don Fernando Maduro. Beautiful, gorgeous Honduran cigar. For the price, I've still never had anything like it. Um, I don't know if they're the same as, you know, cigars every year could be a little different because the crop is different every year. Um, so I don't know if it's as good as, as it was, but man, that thing was freaking amazing. Um, I, I love Partagas Siri P number twos, like the ones that come in the tubo. Those are killer Cubans, if you can get them here. Um, I'm a huge fan of Drew Estate, like um, Liga Privado, you know, T52 is really nice. Um, I like Tatawahe a lot. Um, I, I, I don't think I've had a bad Tatawahe. Um, so things like, I, you know, I like things like that. Like they're relatively easy to get, but they're super good. Rocky Patel vintage series. Uh, they were, they used to be really good. I don't know if they're good anymore, but that's kind of what got me into cigars is Rocky Patel vintage 1990. That's the year I was born. And so I figured, oh, I'll try that. And it was really good. Like, I, 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 I loved the vintage 92s as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Something, like, I'm just trying to, like, think. Um, cigars that are really accessible to everyone because then we can kind of share our experiences. Those are the cigars I like to review because um, I found that, like, boutique cigars are great for me, but when I'm doing videos on them, no one cares because no one has ever heard of them. So, um, 
so yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of <clears throat> what are some other good ones. EP Carrillo, Carrillo is really good. Um, I'm sure the Cigar of the Year is pretty good too this year. It looked pretty good. My favorite beers. Okay, let's see here. Some of my favorite beers. Um, okay, I would say my favorite beers are. Well, it depends. If I if it's you know my my brother-in-law just gave me a um, what was it KBS or CBS from Founders it's it's Founders Canadian Breakfast Stout it was super good really vintage bottle you know there's there's levels to beer you know what I mean like there's levels to everything beer has levels and so he gave me this vintage bottle it was like thirty bucks for beer and I was like man this is like the best stout I've ever had it's like molassesy and super rich that was really really good but i wouldn't have that every day you know that would be something you know i wouldn't pair that with everything um i love like as far as light beer sounds kind of weird but tecate is very good with some lime and uh so like tecate is great because it's i don't know it just goes i think it's better tecate is better than corona that's for sure mm-hmm mm. The 15th anniversary was really good. Um, I'm a huge fan of, oh man, I'm trying to think. Uh, I like Scotch ales, Scottish ales. Like Those are like wee heavies, you know, those are really strong, thick. But I also like really light beer too. Like, it's like you might think I'm crazy, but Bud Light Lime is really good to me. You know, when it's really hot, you like a Bud Light Lime. So I think beers are really interesting to me and especially now that we have a lot of craft beers to choose from, I could name stuff that you wouldn't even know because you can't get it, you know. In Michigan, too, we have a really good micro microbrewery um, sort of culture. So when I was in college, we used to drink Oberon. Oberon was a locally brewed beer in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And um, hold on. Mm. It's called Oberon, O-B-E-R-O-N. And they would bring that out every spring they'd put it out and man it was really good some sort of wheat ale kind of like a half of bison or some sort of wheat ale it was really good um yeah i like a lot of stuff i love porters porters are great you know let's see here uh message redacted oh christina said something the 20th is the best of the rps i haven't had the 20th i've had the 10th the 10th is great you can get a bunch of those i've had the 10th and i've had the 15th not the 20th so that would be the next one to get. Um, let's see here. How's it going, Christina? Uh, what are some of the name? Great hobby. Yeah, cigars that you roll your own are always gonna be the best. They're always gonna be your favorite. Um, that's just kind of how it is, I think. Mm-hmm. Kind of burning a little weird, talking too much. This is how you light a cigar, by the way. You just get the very tip. You don't really need to get up all, all up in there. <laughs> all right, any more questions here? Let's see. Any more questions? Hmm. Let's see here. I think I'm I think I'm up to date. Oh my gosh. Okay, so right now I'm editing. I just bought a ton of video gear. It's coming tomorrow morning. I'm going to be setting up my whole YouTube studio. I'm going to be practicing with this new gimbal I'm getting. I got a bunch of new lenses. Um so that's why you haven't seen a lot of videos is because I'm just I'm trying to make my new intro. I'm trying to I'm, I'm always making thumbnails for old videos. Um, and when, when you're a YouTuber, you have to do what's called SEO, search engine optimization. And um, so it's kind of, um, yeah, if you want your video to be seen, you have to kind of like type in certain words and you have to type in the best words that fit that category. So that's kind of what I'm doing recently is I'm taking old videos and I'm updating them with new words. And so if you want to be a successful YouTuber, 
you gotta know all about Photoshop and SEO and um, you know uh, trademarks like I just bought a new service for for music you can't just use any music you want if you want to if you want to monetize it you have to have you have to buy the trademark for music so I just got this thing called I think it's called uh, epidemic music or something so that's a monthly thing and there's a lot going on with video editing and stuff like that recently got projects on the side coming too uh, that coffee you sent me was amazing. If you ever want to sell it, let me know. I'll buy it. Dude, you got it. Well, I don't know if I could legally sell it because it's food. Shh. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, though. That's Okay, that's a great example. Um, I'm not a professional roaster, but, man, fresh coffee. There's nothing like it. It's very, very good. You can't go wrong with fresh coffee. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Christina, I'm smoking... A Padilla Miami Toro. I've had this for like four or five years and uh, man it is good. It's a very good cigar. I don't know the tobacco or anything on right now but it's killer. It's a, it's a good cigar. So um, I'm kind of a, a fresh coffee advocate because once you go fresh, you can't go back. You know, stale coffee, stuff you buy on the shelves. It's it's very it's a very different product. I mean, yeah. So I would say roll uh, you know, roll your own cigars and roast your own coffee if you have the time, because it's it's fun, and man, it is good. So Oliver, you're welcome, man. The best way to describe. Fresh coffee, okay, so if you're new, the best way to describe fresh coffee, um, it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know, it's, um, if you're into cameras, it'd be like going from a cell phone camera to a real, you know, mirrorless, good camera. Like, it's a, they're both cameras, but this is very, this is, this is designed for photos and video. Like this, this is a phone primarily, you know, so. It's it's a whole new level when you start roasting your own coffee. Um, that's that's kind of, I guess that's a good analogy. Who else? Let's see here. Uh, to do. Um, hmm. Let me try this this tequila. So you grab a little lime. These limes are getting kind of hard. Just a few drops of lime. There we go. Swirl it a little bit. Man, that is so good. If you're new to tequila, um, there's definitely a level. This is just like whiskey, you know. There's all kinds of great, uh, great barrel influences. Very cool new cigars for me tonight. Horrible weather here in Missouri. Oh my gosh. It's sad when you're excited when you hit zero because that's, yeah. The, the, the polar vortex is crazy right now in Michigan too. Coldest weather in 20 years. And here we are, we're freezing at 40 degrees, you know. Uh, oh, hey, you recognize the watch. Um, let's see here. Oh, let's see. What bracelet is this SKX? on um oh i remember okay so i took that reminds me i need i need to buy a band uh, a bracelet for this this is 20 millimeters i believe this was actually from my invicta watch and the guy before me actually took the brand off the logo off so it's just a cheap invicta bracelet um that's been debranded um it it sort of works but there's a little mess up right here in the lugs can you see the lugs how they're not completely covered that bothers me. I don't know if that bothers you, but that bothers me. So right now it's it, it works. From this angle, it looks pretty good. But when you get to the side angle, you're like, what the heck? It doesn't really fit right. But um, I think it's better than the Jubilee bracelet that comes with it. Not much better, but it's better. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Jubilees. Um, Jubilees are like the small links, you know, they're popular like in the, with like Rolexes and stuff. But this is like an oyster bracelet. Oysters are like, 
I don't know how to describe it other than these solid links. Um, I'm definitely going to hit up strap code because I'm looking for a suede leather watch strap um, for this and for a few other pieces. If you don't know, uh, watch it. watches are really unique because if you switch out a strap or, or a bracelet, um, man, it's like a completely new watch and it's very cheap. It's like 20 bucks for a semi-decent strap. A bracelet could run you 50 bucks, um, a good one. But yeah, so I like, I, I love watches and I love changing out straps and I love wearing different watches for different things. And so this has just been my beater. Um, you know, this is an SKX 013. It's smaller than the 007. So this is like what, three millimeters or four millimeters smaller. It's great for my seven inch wrist. If you, if you don't know, watches are also like, it has to fit you and your, and your wrist and your personality like that's that's my that's what I believe like you can't just like the watch like actually try it on and how does it actually fit on you um, I have seven inch wrists so this this is like a smaller dive watch so this fits me perfectly but for some people this might be really tiny you know it's so really it really depends on what you like and your actual wrist uh, let's see here He's getting ready to light up a Room 101, Farce, Connecticut. Uh, James, what is your favorite cigar or most surprising cigar? Mm hmm. Hmm. The most surprising cigar of 2018. Oh, man, I can't even remember. Um, huh. I really, um, I really enjoyed, off the top of my head, I don't know if this is the best, I really enjoyed the Damaso from Padron. It's a Connecticut Padron. And um, I know it's been out for years. I'm pretty sure I had that last year. And I know it's not like in, you know, it's not a traditional Padron, but I really liked it. I thought it was a really good cigar. Had a lot of different, I was surprised. That's all I'm saying. I was like, okay, this is, this is really good. I. Even if it's a Padron or not, it's a great cigar. So the Padron de Masa was really good. Um, I had a really old Davidoff uh, Millennium, I think, and I had a Colorado Claro, Claro from Davidoff. Those, those, those blew me away. Like Some of the older Davidoffs I've had are really, really good. She's not a Sun Grown fan, but my husband would probably agree with that. Um, I had an Ashton the other day. Um, I think it was on my Instagram. It was an Ashton Symmetry. That was very good. And normally, with, if, if I buy Ashton, I think I've only bought the VSG, the Virgin Sun Grown. Um, so I guess that's without sun, I think. Um, I think they have an ESG too, I'm not sure. But I had, the, I had a, I think this was a couple weeks ago, an Ashton Symmetry. It was really good. I would definitely recommend an Ashton Symmetry. Um, I think it was 13 bucks here. Let me know if you guys have had an Ashton. Any any Ashton at all. Let me know your thoughts. Alec Bradley's great. Uh, Brandon, that's a good question. Um, Alec Bradley, they got a... Uh, I haven't had... I've only had like two or three of their sticks. But I had their Quantum or Quattro cigar. It was like a four... It was like a... I don't know. A quat Quattro. It was a box press stick. It was very good. Um, I've had a few of the other stuff too. I don't, can't remember. Overall, I, I like Alec Bradley. Um, I guess I don't have a lot of opinions about it. <laughs> um, Ashton cabinets are classic. You, you know, you see Ashtons and Padrones and, you know, you see that in almost every shop and that's because they're really good. Uh, let's see here. Cabinets are good. What was the oldest cigar you've tried and did the age help? Um, the oldest cigar, I still have a bunch of them. My friend, his name is Liam, he gave, uh, he gave me a few Churchills. They were, uh, what are they? Uh, I am like blanking right now. They are, um, Romeo y Julietas, they're Dominicans. And, um, man, those are, the, 
he said that his dad had him for like six years. He had him for two years and then he gave him to me and I've had him for like since 2011. So these cigars are really old. They're probably 15 to 20 years old. And um, they're super mellow, obviously. And I think the age did them pretty well. Um, but I wouldn't say, like, you know, they weren't that great to begin with, you know. I think one of them was an Excalibur. Uh, you know, they're very common Dominican smokes. But they're, I mean, they're good. They kind of have a, a slight cedar cherry flavor. Let's see here. I'm, a, I'm in the Pravada Cigar Club and I got the 10 year old cigar. That is a great club. Um, that's one of the clubs that like, I would actually buy, you know, cause he gave me a few to try and I was really impressed with, but I would totally buy that cigar. Um, I mean that club, cause it's different, you know, it's like a private collector. Uh, have you ever tried Shoulder Monkey? I, I have at my in-laws, but I don't, just a sample of it. Alec Bradley. Magic Toast, you gotta be, that's, that's a real thing, Magic Toast. I have not had the Alec Bradley Magic <laughs> Toast. That's a great name though. I'm a huge fan of weird names and, and cigar culture as a whole. Like, um, I like weird, like the Tatawahe Monster series, I think it's really well marketed. Um, I like stuff like that, like little collector series and one-offs and yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Um, so Magic Toast sounds like that kind of to me. I haven't had a lot of cigars, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see here, let's see here. Mm. So age, for me, a lot of cigars I've had way too long, which is why I don't buy new ones, because I gotta smoke the old ones. Um, generally, I find that most cigars tend to, they're designed to be smoked when you first get them, so I've been told. Normally they taste pretty good or more mellow after two, three years. After about five years, I tend to think they don't get any better. Five years for me seems to be like, okay, you could still enjoy, I mean, it's still gonna be good no matter what, but I don't think age after five years does a lot for a cigar. Um, that's just my, that's generally what I find. Have you ever had a Sweet Jane? Nope, I haven't. They're part of their three yummy bitches. See, that's why I love three yummy bitches. I gotta get it. I'm gonna try a yummy bitch. Um, private label, Deadwood Tobacco Co. and Deadwood South Dakota. See, I, I wanna try that stuff. Like, that's the kind of stuff I really wanna get into is like, like, I don't know, I think that'd be kind of fun. Um, what was it? The Muwat, the Drew State Muwat Swamp thing was really fun. I like that one a lot. See, I guess right now I'm kind of in the boring stage of cigar stuff is like like I'm just trying to get through the stuff I got, <laughs> you know, if that makes any sense. Good cigar by the way, kind of mellow. Mm, got some woody notes. A slight like almond kind of thing going with it. Very good. Do you find that some cigar brands are regional? Not really, not not too much. Um I find that like Sometimes if a cigar company, if a, let's say, let, let's say, sometimes like I'll go in and, you know, retailers will, they'll, they'll give cigars to certain, uh, be, you know, brick and mortar shops. They'll give, they'll have certain sizes or certain blends just for that. Sometimes they just re, they re, uh, rebrand it. They'll put a new band on the cigar and they'll say it's, you know, just for that one just for that one, uh, you know, uh, shop. Um, but sometimes they'll have a completely new size and a completely, you know, just for one place. I see, I see that a lot. And some of that's marketing and some of that's not. Some of that's just legit, you know, good relationships with distributors and with shops. Sometimes, I've noticed it really doesn't matter too much unless you live, you know, um, some states like California, I've noticed you really have to have money to get good stuff there. Um, Florida is amazing. In Florida, you can get literally anything. Florida is the best state. They have Miami, close to, you know, they have a lot of Cuban culture there. Um, and they have tons of shops. If you live in Florida, you can pretty much get anything. 
for a very good price. So I would say, yeah, Florida's the best state. If you're gonna be into cigars, go to Florida. Um, yeah, my stepdad has a Julius Caesars. He says the same thing. He told me that when I was home. He said, he said man, it's really great, but he's gonna give it two, two to three years, maybe five years of age. And um, yeah, so some, you know, like there's a few cigars where I'm like, this is great, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, you know, I buy a five pack. I'm gonna wait like four or five years and then come back to it and see if it's any better. Um, so that's, that's definitely true with some cigars. I think that the regional aspect sometimes comes down to how effective the rep is. That's very true. Um, I've met a few reps. When I, was, when I was hanging out with Tim, some of these reps were very good. They had really great social skills and Tim could really connect with them. And you know, they had good margins and they, they could build a good relationship. Some reps, you know, some companies, they don't sell to smaller shops. You have to buy a certain amount. Um, so it really depends on how big your shop is. And, and they, they, have to, they have certain rules. They don't want to have a bunch of tiny baby accounts. Um, so every rep is very, very different, um, it seems. Yeah, there's, there's, it's, the cigar industry is very comp. I mean, I, I, any, any industry is complicated. So cigar industry is no exception. It's, there's a lot to learn. Let's see here. What's your guilty pleasure cigar? Um, uh, you, you guys won't like me for this, but um, the uh, Drew Estate um, Cuba Cuba or Blondie, those are my guilty pleasures. I mean, they taste great. Yes, they're sweet. They're very sweet. They're, they're kind of obnoxious, but man, they taste great with a latte and they smell great. So anything, I would say the Drew State Acid line is pretty good. Most of that stuff is good. The Cuba Cuba, I think, is pretty good. It's covered in chemicals and sweeteners, but I like it. You know, I can't deny it. The Drew State, the Java line is pretty good, too. Um, yeah, Drew State, you have to buy a lot. I mean, a lot of these, Altidus, you have to buy a lot. You know, General Cigar, you got to buy a lot because they're giant companies. My, my buddy Richie, he loves the Java Mint. And um, I have more friends that like that Java Mint. I got two or three guys who love the Java Mint. That Java Mint, it'll get you. There's nothing wrong with flavored cigars. I just, you know, it's not, it's not something that I gravitate towards normally. Um, if, I, if, if I'm around a lot of people, and, I'm, and I want to have a cigar, I'll, you know, maybe I'll grab a flavored cigar um, just because it smells better for them. Uh, let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I've heard that Davidoff is super hard to get from local shops because of the demands they place. Um, that's, that could be true. Um, not around here it's not, but I'm sure, I'm sure that is in some areas. I've smoked a ton of cigars, never had anything from Acid Line. Yeah, so acid, I hate the name. I, the, the, the name acid just sounds stupid to me. And I hate the little logo with the guy smoking and it's like the palm tree. I hate the branding of acid cigars. But I will say this, they're high quality cigars. Um, they, they're, they're flavored very well. And I don't like the sweetened tips. I don't like the, the, the sugar coating they put on the tips. But the tobacco's great, the flavoring's great. I just hate the stupid name acid. I mean, what are you smoking? I'm smoking an acid. It's just, it doesn't add class, but a lot of people in that demographic who want to buy a cigar, who want a flavored cigar, you know, I guess that name works. I don't know. I mean, um, it, you know, if, if it was branded differently, I'd probably buy more of them. Um, yeah, Java mints are great cigars. I, I like the name Java. I like the name Java a lot. Um, there's a, I like the name, I'm trying to think, Kentucky Fire Cured, like that's, that's a great name. It's exactly what it is and it's, it's, it's a great cigar. Um, there's been some cigar personalities in social media who have been accused of inflating their fan base with fake accounts. Do you one, think it happens and two, how does it, does it bother you? Um, I don't know. Um, I've been doing this too long to care. 
<laughs> um, you know, there's all kind. You could cheat. I mean, you could cheat in anything. You could. I'm sure you could find ways to make. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. Um, it's all about connection and personality. And um, you know, either you have a personality or you don't have a personality. And that's just you know, people like Tim. You know, or those guys at Zeal, you know, they have great personalities and they're really live and they're really, yeah, and they, they bring you into the culture, they bring you through the video and they grow really fast because people connect. And so the people who make, you know, fake accounts and it's like, who cares, you know, we don't really make, I don't really make money on cigar stuff, you know, so I would assume they don't. Um, it's very difficult, unless you have a shop or something. You really don't make, you just do it because it's a passion. From my experience. But it's kind of sad. Isn't it sad? People are like buying, people are buying affection or people are buying numbers or buying subscribers. It's just kind of, I don't see, there's no pride in that. I don't see any pride in that. Mm hmm. Acid sells a ton of cigars and they're very good. There's nothing wrong with them. Not a huge fan of acid, but that does hold a place in my heart because it was my first cigar. Yeah, I had an acid blondie, one of my first cigars. It was very good. I had it with a nice latte or something. It's hard to hate that cigar. Here's the problem. There's nothing to hate about it. You know, it's, it's really, there's not a lot to dislike about it. It's sweet, and that's it. It's just a very good, sweet cigar. They, all their stuff is pretty good. Um, so if, if you don't mind sweet, definitely try an acid. Does the fetching Miss Patton smoke? No, fetching Miss Patton doesn't smoke cigars. She she's um, you know the flavor for her is kind of eh. Um, plus she's a singer, so she thinks it's gonna mess up her throat. She you know she's like really sensitive. She's like I'm gonna you know I don't want to get cancer or you know. So I said okay, I don't care. Um, but she doesn't mind me smoking them. I, she'll she'll be right here next to me and it doesn't bother her. Mm-hmm. Caleb, good question. Um, cigar reviews. I have a, a care package from Gra uh, Gran Habano. They're sending a bunch of cigars. I'm going to do, like, my overall opinion on them and maybe review some of those cigars. Um, I have the most expensive cigar I have is a Zeno The Pulse. And I want to review that because it's been a few years. And so I really want to – that's going to come up soon. So stay tuned for that one. That one's a really expensive, rare cigar. Um, Zeno is owned by Davidoff, so it's 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 in that caliber, you know. It's like a high-end Davidoff. Uh, do you listen to Cigar Authority? I do not. Um, to be honest with you, I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> um, I'm, you know, it seems uh, it seems like you're either. This sounds, this this sounds. I don't know, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but either you're putting out content or you're consuming content. For the most part, I put out content, you know? So I don't really watch people. Um, I'll watch Tim's videos. That's about it. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I like, I, you know, I, I have uh, Cigar Aficionado, the magazine. I like that magazine. For the most part, I like it. Um, there's a lot of stupid stuff in there, a lot of ads. But, you know, I'm a content producer, so I don't, I don't really consume a lot of it. I don't know. This is kind of stupid, I guess. Okay, um, I do need to do more cigar stuff. I've neglected... I've highly neglected my cigar fans. I'm sorry. Um, we do... I need, I need to do more of that. It's just I have all this other stuff coming in the mail, and it's like, okay, I got deadlines for that, brand deals for this, brand deals for that. And the cigar stuff kind of gets pushed away. So I'm sorry about that. Um, for my 10,000 subscribers, good question. Um, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to tell you guys right now since you guys are my inner circle. Um, I've got 10 troy ounces of gold, like a nice, not gold, silver. If it was gold, I'd sell it. Um, 10 troy ounces of silver, it's a, you know, three or 400 bucks or whatever. And I'm gonna carve it up. I was thinking about carving it into a silver play button, making my own $10,000 plaque, 
or 10,000 subscriber plaque. That'd be cool. Um, maybe I'll do a, a giveaway with a few companies, maybe. I don't know. I got to think about that. Um, let's see here. What's the worst cigar faux pas you've witnessed? Um, this is a good story. So my dad, I was in Florida for Christmas. We're at the local cigar shop and my dad starts picking up cigars and, you know, putting his nose in it and then putting it down. And that's not bad if you buy the cigar, but if you were an owner, I bet it's kind of like, oh, don't do that. Like, don't touch it to your nose. You're getting your boogers all over it. and. And then you're putting it back down. So the next guy's got to deal with your boogery cigar. Um, I also hate it if I'm golfing with some friends and they're like smashing their cigars when they put it out and it's a big, I don't want, it's like, just put it out. You don't have to smash your cigar, you know? Um, I don't like that crap. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if I had my choice of any cigar, I would, I would review, you know, like a ridiculous, like $300 cigar or something. Um, there was one cigar that was put in crystals in the wrapper, you know. Um, I would review like a gold cigar, you know, something ridiculous, just because, just cause. I think it'd be fun. Um, cigar aficionado is pretty cheap. I think it's like three or four bucks, I think every month maybe? I think 15, 20 bucks a year, it's not much. Um, oh, the knocking sound. Ah, oh, <laughs> it's this. This is my 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 lap my lavalier microphone. I think that. Oh no, it's it's the lighter dinging around. It's probably really annoying. Uh, let's see here. I'm a silver stacker. I have about 600 ounces. 600. I think a troy ounce is like what 30, 40 bucks. That's a lot of silver. I probably only have 20 ounces maybe. Not much. That's a <laughs> 600, wow. Some people love collecting silver in the different types of molds and casts and you know shapes and it's really fun. Um, so silver is definitely, uh, you know, it's a poor man's gold. You know, it's really fun. You, when my, uncle at, my uncle actually had a, a big block of it as a door stopper, you know. It's just, it's fun and you, you know, it's not really a great investment, but it's a fun investment, and it's very low risk. Uh, London cut 24 karat gold. Is that is that the one covered in gold, like the cigar? I think that's the one covered in gold leaf. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I've put the lit end, I think one time in my mouth, it was disgusting. I was talking and I wasn't paying attention. It jabbed, you know, uh, put it in my mouth. Uh, let's see here. Bro, Montana, what kind of torch lighter is that you were using? This, if you don't know, is the Vector. Vector lighters. I, I have a link below if you want to get one. Um, I think that's the same one. Five jets. Huge lighter. Very affordable. 40 bucks. Powder. This is pow powder coated. And it goes great with my Zycar lighter. This is my, my go-to, very affordable and very, very reliable products right here. No problem, Derek. Um, silver is about $14 an ounce. Is, it, is an ounce and a troy ounce the same? I think they're different. I thought silver, I thought silver was 30 an ounce. Mmm. Smoked in Atabee. Atabay, Atabee, Atabay. I've my 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 uh my stepdad i tried one of his but i've never had my own <laughs> they kind of they they look like cohibas almost don't they um that the band does made some good money from silver you can definitely make good money from silver and it's a very safe um it's a relatively safe investment um i want to learn more about how to trade and exchange and make money invest in it i want to i want to learn how to do that do you know kirk from poolside cigar for you i believe he lives in your area i do well i've known kirk since since well since since he started youtube um this was when i was in michigan 
he lives in Tucson, about two and a half hours away, and um, I've never met him in person, but I want to. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Um, I haven't seen his stuff in a while. Does he still do cigar stuff? I have no idea. <laughs> the Kayon Afonso was involved in the design of the Cuban Bahique. He is the owner and blender of Atabe. Makes sense. Very similar looking, very similar caps, very similar labels. Um, the, both very premium cigars. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Nelson. Oh, Nelson. I haven't seen a review from him in a long, in a while. Either have I, you know, this is what happens. You, you, you have a family, you get really busy. And you know, I got a full-time job too. It's, it's hard work. And with cigars, you know, uh, it's hard to, you know, it kind of goes to the side when you have a family. So I get it. Makes sense. Um, I can't believe we've been doing this for 70, 71 minutes. Um, oh, Nigel, I did a video on this. Um, what do I do for work? I'm a youth advocate, so I help kids get, get adopted in the foster care system. So basically, I, I drive around, meet kids. I, I'm kind of like a matchmaker. And yeah, I find great families for these kids. And I make videos take pictures you know I just try to find adoptive homes for kids it's kind of a cool job it's really it's a fun job uh, a regular ounce is 28 grams while a troy ounce is 31 why do they do that why is why are precious metals in troy ounces versus regular ounce what why why is it just a historical thing it, yeah so my job is super rewarding it's uh, you know I have a lot of free I can kind of make my schedule the way I need to because my kids are, are in school so I can see them. Well, I can see them in school too, but I like to see them after so I start work later and then I can edit videos late at night and wake up later. Um, but basically I just drive around a lot and I, you know, just do fun stuff. Um, if you saw my Instagram the other day, we, we did a cool NASCAR event. So we did a, a filming with the local news and. I got my kid on this news station so we could go, so we could find a family so that this local NASCAR thing, mm, the local NASCAR racetrack here, basically we got to meet the president and get a tour. We, we filmed a thing for the news. And so through that process, we're hoping to find a family. So it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ever noticed nicotine overload from a cigar? I've noticed to leave a visa and I loved it, but I got a message for the nauseous. Yeah, so when I first started out, that would happen a lot. I was just puffing away. Um, the trick with that is to uh, a teaspoon of sugar. Uh, if you feel nauseous, some sugar makes it go away like that. For me, anyway. Um, something sweet, for whatever reason, gets rid of all that nausea. It hasn't happened to me in about five, six years. But it, for me, it was the Nub Maduro. That was pretty strong at the time for me. Um, that probably tells you that you're probably smoking too fast or too much. Uh, it's a historical thing. Oh, the Troy ounce is a historical thing. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because they're like no, they're not they're not the same. What was the biggest letdown of cigars you've ever had? What was one of the best surprises? The worst cigar I've ever had was a Maroma. M-A-R-M-O-M-A, -M -M -A, I think. Crappy, tastes like cardboard. I lit it, tasted it, put it out. It was like three or four bucks. It was bad, it was really bad. It was from Famous Smoke Shop. Um, just bad, it was, I, 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 I'm not picky. I'm really not a picky guy. Um, I was really surprised by the swamp thing. I didn't have a lot of expectations because it's green and it's it's kind of a funky blend. Very good cigar. I shouldn't have liked it that much, but I really liked it. Um, 
Oh, I, there should be a link in the... Is there, there should be a link for the lighter down below. Um, that would also support my channel too, because if it's an affiliate link, then you know I might get like a dollar or something for something like that. I mean, it helps support the channel. Um, but I think go on Amazon, type in the word vector lighter, and look for something like this. You, you can't go wrong. That's generally what I find is you can't go wrong. I've had this for a couple years. It works really, it works very well. Um, and they're like 40 bucks. Uh, let's see here, let's see. Do, 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 do. Are you happy Cuban cigars are basically legal now? I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, super happy about that. I don't, the Partagas, some of the Partagas and some of the Cohibas I love. I've had a uh, Romeo y Julieta, what was it, Epicurean something, I forget. That was really good. I haven't had a lot. I've only had like five or six Cubans though, so I don't know what I'm missing. Uh, have you smoked any pipe tobacco lately? Yes. Um, the other day I had Bosley's, some Bosley tobacco. Boswell's, I think it was Boswell. It was some Boswell blend. It was pretty good. And I had, hmm, had some vanilla pipe blend. It was really good. Sometimes I, um, if I have a little bit of pipe tobacco left in jars, I'll put it into a big jar, and I call that the best of the rest. And it's a blend of all of my pipe tobacco, and I mix it up, and I smoke that, and it's actually really good. It sounds gross, but it's literally every pipe tobacco I own in one jar, mixed together, and I really like that one a lot, actually. I, sh I shouldn't like it. Nigel Wakita. That n makes me feel a little better. <laughs> I felt like a huge vag that night. <laughs> yeah, Oliva cigars, especially the Serie V, that's very strong. And a lot of people who are new to cigars, they gravitate toward the Serie V because they see it everywhere. The Serie Vs are literally everywhere and they're very strong. And so for a lot of new guys, especially, that's like their first really strong, you know, um, yeah, so it makes sense. Uh, would you ever do review like the corner store cigars? Um, I've done one or two of them and they're really popular actually. Like I did a CAO Cigarello little moon trace one. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really interest me. Maybe I should do that just for fun. The back, have you guys ever had the backwoods? Um, a lot of people I know roll those, roll those for joints, but Backwoods are like these really flavored cigars, you know, um, gas station cigar. Um, there's one called like Ugly Coyote, I think. It's a really raggedy cigar. Maybe I'd try that. But I mean, it doesn't excite me. I try to do stuff on the channel that really gets me excited, you know. Cohiba Blue was a bad smoke. Hmm, I haven't had it. I don't think I've had it. Hmm. Maybe there's a Cohiba that had like a some sort of crown on it. I don't remember. It's pretty good. It was it was okay. I've had a, a lot of Dominican Cohibas and they're all kind of the same. They're all kind of just like blah. Eh, it's a nice it's a cigar. Normally cigars that are from you know Altadis or General Cigar, not all of them, but a lot of them, I'm like, eh, it's okay. It's, it's basic, I mean, it, it's good. Aging Room Maduro. Yeah, Aging Room, I haven't had an Aging Room actually. I, I confuse Aging Room with Room 101, so I have no comment on that because I mix them all the time. Yeah, so for upcoming videos, I got uh, a few coffee things I got to review. One of them's coming from, it was a Shark Tank product. It was a cold brew device, as seen on Shark Tank. Got a few mattresses and toppers. Those are always popular. And um, I've got, uh, I'm trying to think, got a lot of CBD stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about like what's in my camera bag because 
I got a lot of gear, like this little light, you know, like this kind of stuff. You might not like that, so maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't talk about that. But I got so much stuff. I have a whole whiteboard full of stuff that I have to review because people send it in and then you have to review it, you know. The trick is saying no because if it's not part of your your channel, then no one no one cares. Troubled Bananas, I like that name. He says, the first thing I ever smoked was a cherry cigar. I was like 10 or 11, old friend of mine stole out of his brother's truck. That was my first cigar too. It was a Swisher Sweet cherry cigar. And I was probably like 17, 18. Yeah, it was bad, but you know, it was my first cigar. So cherry Swisher Sweet. Uh, my room 100. Farce Connecticut is smoking good. Oh, great, the 101, yeah, farce, farce. What's farce? Does farce mean false? Maybe, uh, maybe it means fierce. Maybe. Oh my gosh, it's getting really cold. My hands are freezing. Oh, I'd love to see review La Colombia, La Colombi, Colombi, Colombia coffee. It's the best brand coffee I've ever had. All the products are fantastic. I gotta check that out, Colombia. Uh, I've never made a kit. One of the questions is, have you have you ever made a kit, uh, a, a tobacco pipe from a a kit. I've never done that. I've seen them all the time in like magazines. They're like 40 bucks and that'd be kind of fun making your own pipe. Hand carving it. I got a Dremel so I can do that with a Dremel. I'm, you know, I might do that actually because that's something I would do. You know, I would, I'm a fiddler so I, I think that'd be a fun weekend project and then you could stain it. Um, I've stained a few pipes already. They're pretty fun. Mmm. This is, this is what I'm drinking. Bullet and tequila. <laughs> if you missed it, you were talking about some of these Costco things I got. I, uh, this is the worst Costco liquor. Spiced rum, don't get it. It's, it's not really good for anything other than maybe mixing with Coke. This tequila is Correjo, very good for the price. You could sip it. I'm sipping it with some lime right now. But I was drinking some of this Bullet Bourbon. This is a standard for me at Costco. So Bullet Bourbon is what I normally drink. And then uh, this tequila is pretty good. I think tequila is, I don't know, tequila and cigars is pretty good together. Surprisingly good, if you have a good tequila. Yep. Both of these are like middle shelf, uh, you know, middle shelf stuff. They're not really expensive, and um, but they're really good. You get a lot of bang for your buck with those. You should also check out Teleseto Coffee. It's a subscription brand. It's amazing. Maybe I'll I'll email them and maybe they'll send me some stuff for free. I try to get a lot of free stuff, <laughs> just because. Um, I was buying so much for the channel and it was just, it got out of hand. But if, maybe if they send it, box wine, yeah, box wine. Well, if it's good box wine, I've had one good box wine, I forget what it was. I've had wine from a can. It was called a man can and it was pretty good wine out of a can. So I shouldn't judge. We enjoy a lot of uh, Malbec from uh, Argentina, from Mendoza. Very good wine, ten dollars a bottle. We like the almost. There's a few others, but we've been digging Malbec lately. Malbec has been the super affordable, great wine, and um, yeah, it's not going to break the bank. Seriously, guys, it's getting really cold. Like it dropped twenty degrees since I've been out here. That's crazy. 
Okay, 84 minutes. I think I should wind up. I think I should wind it up. Hmm. It's kind of weird because I'm talking to myself and I'm like, I'm kind of loud and I'm outside. Um, but yeah, 84 minutes. What else, what else do I talk about? I need someone here to talk to because otherwise it's kind of awkward and I'm like talking to myself. Uh, I'm trying to think. Hmm. So yeah, I'm probably gonna see, I'm gonna see Tim tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow I have a long day, I'm gonna be shooting videos all day. That's what I do, I try to batch videos, and then I can edit those videos all week. Um, so tomorrow I think I'll just hang out with Tim. I don't know. Try not to make a video of Tim, just for the views. Uh, I think you should get a cheap pipe kit from Voldemort Freehand. It's a website. Oh, I'll try. I'll, I'll look into that later on. Do you find it cold weather makes cigars taste worse than hot weather? Um, I think it's relative. I think hot and cold are relative. Like right now, it's 45 degrees and I'm freezing. But 45 degrees is all relative. When I was in Michigan, 45 degrees was kind of warm. So. I prefer hot weather with cigars and cold weather with pipes. That's what I prefer. Um, are you a barbecue man? Do you like grilling? I, I'm obsessed with grilling. Um, you wanna check out my, my, my setup here? Okay, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Hold on here. Okay, this is what I got. A lever, mini lever, and a big grill. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. <laughs> mm. That's my light, oh my gosh. Oh, there you are, okay. Yeah, I like grilling. I got a little basic Weber and a mini Weber for, uh, do you guys know what cold smoking is? So, um, I, got a, I got a propane, a, a, mini, a mini Weber. So if you want to, oh, jeez. Oh, if you want to cold smoke something, like fish, you can do that really well in a little mini Weber. Um, I can also do like just a few chicken breasts in the mini Weber. And then the big Weber I do pulled pork and brisket and tri-tip. Um, so it's a very basic setup, but you can do a lot with a basic kettle grill. Like you'd be surprised what you can do. Um, yeah, the propane is only really good for, um, you know, if we have like, uh, I'm trying to think like, you know, if it's really hot inside, we'll cook on the grill outside. Um, the propane's good for like nachos. Like we have a big skillet, we'll make nachos on there. Chicken breast, burgers are fine. Um, and the, the Webers are just great for like smoking or, you know, if I want charcoal, if I want a hassle. But yeah, don't underestimate a mini Weber because yes, they're small, yes, they're basic. They're not insulated well, but you can do a lot with a little mini Weber. Um, you can actually turn it into uh, you could you could turn it into a mini fire a mini fire pit if you want so if you're camping it's a great fire pit it's a great cooker it's a great cold smoker I'm a huge fan of that um, dude mess it uh, email there's an email below honest cigar reviews at gmail email me your rib recipe because um, my my ribs suck um, I've had I've had good baby back ribs but my St. Louis spare ribs, they suck. So I need help with ribs. And a lot of times we have ribs on sale here. So hit me up, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, this is my uh, my ring light, my halo light. 
It's like a uh, hundred and something bucks on Amazon. It's pretty good. It's a little bit, I should have put the other filters on. Uh, yeah, cold smoking. I Actually, I've never smoked cheese. I should though, I could. You could smoke cheese, salmon. Uh, what else could you smoke? You could smoke anything. Corn, I guess you could, I don't know, I'm trying to think. By the way, corn on the charcoal is way better than on anything else. Corn on the cob. Yeah, shoot me an email. Um, the big green egg is awesome. Those are really expensive. I saw one called a Komodo at Walmart. It's like a it's like a green egg knockoff. I was considering that, but I don't smoke enough to just to justify it. But they look awesome. I would totally do that. Uh, Weber's are lightweight, easy to move. I can move that over here. I can do, you know, I can just, I don't have to worry about it. And it's, they're cheap. They're like 150 bucks for a mid-level. You can get a high-level Weber with a table and this and that. And, well, you know, Weber even has like high-end smokers. And uh, I just have the basic one. Uh, let's see here. You got 40 cigars to spare though? Yeah, I love low and slow. Um... Uh, let's see here. The last ribs I did were about six hours, but they were still really tough. And I think it's because they were too close to the charcoal. I do a snake method. So the snake method is when you get two or three charcoal all around the rim. So it burns in a snake. But for whatever reason, the spare ribs were like too cartilagey. They weren't rendered right. Maybe I did it wrong. I don't know, but I love ribs. I think I just need to buy baby back from now on because the spare ribs I had are just, the spare ribs are just not good. I don't know. I gotta get some baby backs. Um, trying, I'm trying to save you a pellet. I've never used person, but Tommy. Yeah, pellets are like, um, like Traeger's. Um, Traeger makes like pellet smokers and I've heard they're great. I've heard you could set the temperature and you just, you leave it. It does it automatically, it feeds its own self. It does everything. All you gotta do is eat it, you know, when you're done. That would be great, having a Weber. I, I, I smoke, I almost, yeah, I think it's all just mesquite. I just do mesquite. Sometimes, I think one time I did hickory. Mesquite, salt, pepper, paprika, garlic. It's kind of Texas style, sorta. Yeah. Now see, now we're on to the tequila. Ooh. Yeah, Costco. So I got ribs at Fry's. They were on sale. Fry's is like Costco. Is, Fry's is like Kroger. Costco though, I need to get their. I need to get their ribs. Whenever I go to Costco, I buy a tri-tip, and that lasts like a week or two. Tri-tip is like a California cut, and it's kind of like lean and marbled, and you can smoke it. You could reverse sear it. It's pretty good. And um, you can make, what's that green stuff you put on steak? It's made from like parsley. Uh, I like that with tri-tip. You bring it up to like, but tri-tip, I bring it up to like 130, 140, you know, smoke it to like 130, 140, and let it rest, and man, that thing is good. It's like a poor man's, it's sort of like a poor man's, um, it's not like, a, I'm trying to think, what do they call it, poor man's brisket? It's sort of like that. I think there's another cut that's actually a poor man's brisket. Uh, I hear you can use cherry wood. Yeah, you can use any kind of wood you want, really. Um, mesquite, hickory, cherry, apple, those are like the main ones. Um, I'm trying to think. Around here, we use a lot of mesquite. I think it's a southwest, more of a southwest thing. We have tons of mesquite trees. Apple's great, though. Apple's, apple's a little bit lighter. Um, maybe a little bit sweeter, I think, of a smoke. Yep. We are at 94 minutes. I think I'm almost done. 
If you guys have any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna just wrap it up, clean all this up. Oh, chim chim chimichurri, chimichurri, chimichurri. That's the green stuff. I love that. We make that. Uh, I think Parmesan cheese and parsley. Um, you can also make it with cilantro, and you put that in the food processor, and man, that's so good on your on a tri-tip. You're making me hungry. I didn't have dinner yet. Man, this is a good cigar. Yeah, chimichurri is a, I think it's a Brazilian thing, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's, it's great. You put that instead of steak sauce, and that'll make your steak amazing. Or, or, or you could just do butter. Like, honestly, butter, I mean, butter makes everything better. Chimichurri, I think, is like olive oil, parmesan, parsley, you know, whatever spices you want. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is getting really good, actually. I don't want to put it out. Uh, I don't know. Or I don't know. I didn't have dinner, so I'm actually feeling the alcohol a little bit, so don't mind me. Writing the email, enjoyed the stream. Yeah, man, dude, um, troubled bananas. I cannot wait to read the email. I need to hear the recipe. I wanna know what kind of rub you use. Um, or do, do you just do wet, like mop it? Um, let me know. Olive oil, garlic, cilantro, and parsley. Yeah, that's what I do, yeah, that's what we, we've done that too. Um, we've done variations on that too, like, um, I'm trying to think. We did uh, we did a hundred percent cilantro once, and we doubled up on the cheese, and man, it was good. No, sir, dry rub for me only. That's see, that's uh, uh, if you're into dry rubs, if you're into like you know Texas barbecue, dry rub. They rely low and slow, dry rub, salt and pepper. That's pretty much what I hear across the board for Texas style. If you grow your own tobacco, let me know how it turns out, Pete, because it, it might be kind of difficult. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I've heard that it's hard because you, you can grow tobacco. The hard part is curing it, fermenting it, and curing it. That's the hard part. That's what I've been told. You'll have splotchy leaves if you don't do it right. you got to cure it just right, otherwise it turns moldy. It's like... I think the growing part's the easy part, but so I've been told. It'd still be a fun experiment, and they 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 are, they're actually really pretty. They they create really beautiful buds, flowers, and giant leaves. Let's see here. I've grown other things real well. <laughs> Man, this looks cool. The the lights, man. Man, that looks that looks awesome. I can't wait to swim. Coming in like April, we'll start swimming again in the pool. Alrighty, so I think that's it. We talked about li uh, liquor. I can't even talk. Liquor, knives, cigars, accessories, upcoming reviews, barbecue. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let us know how it goes. Give me, make, make a video, Pete, I'm gonna challenge you. Make a video on how to grow tobacco at home. That would be a killer, uh, that would just be fun. I, I would really enjoy that. Um, I've noticed that whenever I buy whole leaf tobacco, the nicotine content is really, really strong. So you have to really age it and cure it. Otherwise it's too strong to smoke. So yeah, that might be the hardest part about the whole thing. still fun though there's nothing wrong with that it's just fun 
I think we gotta purge this. Gotta give it the old purge. Now we're purged. Okay, I'll for sure record the journey. Yeah, please do, and then send send it to me. It, you know, email me, comment on my videos, send it to me. That'd be awesome. There's a lot of people who document other things, like other things they grow, but not tobacco. So let us know how it goes. Who knows? Maybe I'll be maybe I'll be growing too. dog is annoying. Can you hear that dog? All day, all night, this dog won't quit. <sighs> so annoying. Alrighty guys, we are at a hundred minutes. I'm gonna peace out. I got a lot of clean up here. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more cigar stuff, mattresses, coffee reviews, more live videos. We have, uh, geez, just a lot going on. My other channel is Jimmy Reviews. It's based off of CBD products, if you're into that. And I think that's it. Peace.